What is up everyone? So today we're going to be creating an HPA valve regulator or output pressure checker uh, device. So that way we could see how much output pressure we're getting out of our uh, regulators here. Um, you might be confused as to why I'd be doing that because when you buy a regulator, it normally tells you how much output pressure you're going to get. Well, uh, since I'm doing the whole self-defense uh, riot situation as far as the output tank is concerned or output pressure for the tank is concerned and chronographing that stuff, I'm going to need to know exactly how much PSI my tank is outputting, not uh, how much it holds, okay? So this is a 3000 PSI tank, but the output pressure is determined by the regulator and how many springs or shims or what have you in the regulator that allows more airflow uh, per uh, pull of the trigger, okay? So that's what we're gonna do today. So let's get into this DIY and see what it's all about. The first thing you're gonna need is tools, okay? Use adjustable wrenches if you have to, that's totally up to you. Uh, you're gonna need Teflon tape or blue Loctite 242. That's personal preference as well. The reason why I would go with blue Loctite is because it's less likely to come apart, okay? The reason why I would go with uh, Teflon tape of some sort, I would prefer if you would uh, choose to go with um, this type of uh, Teflon tape because it's rated for gas lines and stuff. Uh, so go with this or go with Loctite. But the reason why I'd go with this is because um, when you're dealing with Loctite, you got to wait for cure time so you won't be able to use it right away. This, you'll be able to use it right away, okay? Next thing you want to consider is your valve system, okay? So this is basically your ASA. And what you need to consider with your ASA is one that either bleeds out or one that has two um, threaded ports so that way you could run a bleed and a gauge okay this one here in particular is the cp in dust black and it has the valve uh, release there another thing you're going to need is uh, well you're not going to need these it's all dependent on your regulator okay so this regulator let's go over the regulator first so the regulator i chose is quarter inch thread here and these couplers here take quarter inch and uh, downsize it to three eighths and the reason why you need to go from quarter inch to three eighths is because this is quarter inch and the threads on here are three eighths okay for the regulator i chose i chose this liquid filled um, carbo uh, regulator and this goes up to 1500 psi and the reason why I chose to go with this one is because it's liquid filled. So your needle's not going to jump real fast all around. And it's going to give me a precise measurement of output air. Okay. Cause it only goes to 1500 PSI. So I need it since I chose this one, it's a uh, quarter inch uh, MPT thread. And this on and off ASA is eighth inch NPT. So I need an adapter that's gonna adapt this gauge from quarter inch to eighth inch. That's where this comes in. These are stainless steel. Stainless steel is expensive. You could go the route you decide to, whether it's gonna be um, brass or um, steel, that's up to you. I would prefer to stay with stainless steel only because um, I know the contents are okay with, uh, or you know cross compatible with this hpa stuff or aluminum okay because some of your stuff are aluminum such as this asa okay so some metals uh may deteriorate aluminum uh stainless steel could uh deteriorate or make aluminum soft um that's kind of you know the chemistry uh side of things so you got to know your metals how you're implementing them so stainless steel is technically really not the best for aluminum but it's a good um, good material especially because stainless steel doesn't rust and create additional um, particles that could potentially clog up your system okay from there i have an on and off valve like that okay so i can bleed out the air so i don't have to unscrew it and then hear it purge out okay 
And that's why I said to go with the double output um, threads. So there's a thread on this side and a thread on the opposite side. You may be wondering why I chose this gauge and uh, didn't just buy an HPA tank gauge. And the reason for that is because these HPA tank gauges go up to 5,000 PSI and they're not uh, really precise as far as the, the units of measure here, okay? They jump around, I think by 500 PSI, okay? So I want little detail increments. I'm never gonna have an output pressure of 5,000 PSI. Um, so my max output pressure is gonna be around 1,100 uh, if I'm lucky. So 1,500 is gonna be perfect for the uh, precision that I need, especially when I go into the chronographing stage, all right? Some people put uh, quick detaches so that way they could change between gauges. But remember, if you have a high pressure gauge that goes up to 5,000 PSI, that spring tension is gonna be a lot stiffer uh, to make that thing um, go to those different increments. Whereas this one's gonna be a lighter spring and since I'm gonna stay under that 1500 PSI, it's not gonna fully stretch that spring out. Um, so I'll never see the full capability like this one. I'll never see that uh, capability of fully compressing that spring to really get it to work in the um, equal state that it needs to be in. So if that's a 5,000 PSI, optimally it probably work best at around 3,000, okay? So this one's 1,500, so 750, 800 is its perfect state, okay? And then anything over that is gonna stretch a little bit more, but since it's liquid filled, it's gonna um, not allow it to jump around and move as much. Okay, so let's get to assembling this. Uh, first of all, what you need to do is take it all out, okay? And I have a tank to test it. Um, so basically you could put the gauge on any side you want. So it's personal preference, left, right. Um, I'll save you the hassle and I'll put it together. Uh, and then you just put Teflon tape along these threads, okay? Remember, if you screw this in clockwise, all right, you wanna put your Teflon tape counterclockwise. So if I'm looking at it, at it this way and I'm screwing it in this way, you want your Teflon tape to wrap around this way. So the opposite way of the way I'm screwing so that way it doesn't unravel it. Okay, if you're using Loctite, just put a little drop of blue 242 Loctite on there and then thread these in. So let's make it um, happen. So this is what you should end up with. Your gauge, your adapter, your ASA, and your uh, bleed out valve here, okay? So what you need to do is just apply it, just like you were gonna apply it to a regular gun, like that. And then now make sure your valve's off. Now you wanna turn this all the way down and then it'll tell you how much PSI you're at, okay? Now when you let this out, it shoots out the back, boom. Or you could bleed it out here. Um, and the, the reason why I have this attached to it, you might be like, hey, why do you need that? It's because if I wanted to drain the tank completely, I would need to be able to compress this valve. So this compresses the plunger. And now I could turn this valve and empty out my entire tank, okay? like that, okay? Without this, when I unscrew this, the air's gonna blow out here. The air that's trapped in this gauge here is gonna blow out through the back, but nothing's gonna fully release all the air pressure in my tank. And since I got a compressor, I'm gonna need to maybe uh, change up the shims as I please to get even more pressure out of it, who knows? So that's why I added this little on and off here. But if you're just doing it to check how much PSI is in your tank, uh, this and the ASA would do the trick, okay? Okay, so let's see the output pressure of this current regulator. So I'm not getting exactly 750 PSI out of this regulator. And I think this one's supposed to be rated at 800. Um, 
and I have about 1500 PSI in the bottle. So it is what it is. As you can tell, I'm not getting the full output pressure and that's exactly what I need to know. So that's going to complete today's little quick DIY project on um, your tank regulator output pressure gauge. Okay. If you like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated. If you want to see content like this and other content I'll be posting in the near future, consider subscribing. Until next time, I'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks for watching.